Okay, we're here with Mei Peng. This is her photos of John Lennon, uh, his sons, with her, with Paul McCartney, Ringo, a lot of interesting pictures. George. I got all four. You have one just with George. Where was, and that was taken in New York? That was taken in New York. He was in town to uh, do, what was it, mastering of his first post solo, what was it, solo album, All Things Must Pass. So, he brought that. so that's when I met him. So tell us a couple words about either that picture and how George was like there, or if you want to talk about George in general. I think George was sweet. I was too nervous, you know. And you know, I was out, uh, he came over with his wife, Patty and uh, this guy George, another George, uh, worked in, uh, at Apple in the studios in London and uh, to do the mastering. And so I got friendly with, with both Georges in a sense, you know, and I just remember uh, George, the other George, George Peck, saying, listen, want to go out with me to dinner? Because I'm going out with George and Pat, want you just come along? And I went, oh my God. You know, very nice. They were so sweet. George has always been sweet. Too. How did John and George get along? Very well. When I was, when, <laughs> it's funny, it, they were fine with me uh, around. And in fact, George turned around and said, I'm glad, to John, I'm glad she's with you. <laughs> and then he looked at me and he goes, I'm glad you're with him. <laughs> so it was very really cool. You have a bunch of pictures with Ringo too. You, you got close with Ringo and John yes, together? Ringo was also, he, we spent a lot of time in LA with him. Um, he would either live in the hotel room, we had a duplex, he had one room. One bedroom, we had the other. Or uh, we all lived in the house in Santa Monica, which was a big famous house that this photo, where this came from, or this was during the making of uh, Harry Nielsen's album, Pussycats. And whose home was that? I'm sorry? Whose home was that in Santa that, Monica? That was a rented home. We rented it because uh, John thought it was a good idea to have everybody in one spot. So, you know, you could think about it. Keith Moon, Harry Nielsen, Klaus Vorman, you know. John and Ringo all in one area. There's a little bit area there. Uh, but it was a rented home and it was once owned by uh, Peter Lawford, who was, of course, the, the inlet to the Kennedys. They used to come, apparently. And uh, rumor has it, so did Marilyn. Uh, what did Ringo and John like to talk about? Did they like to joke a lot, just enjoy each other's company, or did they have a lot of conversations? Uh, they just enjoyed each other's company. They, they were just great. They, it wasn't about business. It was really more about their, what's going on, what they like, what they're going to do, you know, songs. And uh, that picture there with Paul McCartney, how long were they together in that time? That was a jam session. Oh, that jam session was the night before. Okay. This was the next day. This is where Linda and, J and Paul brought their kids over for the afternoon. And that was it. And then we didn't see them again until back in New York. What was the jam session like? A mess. <laughs> but it wasn't meant for recording. It was a release. It was after the first night of the session at, with Harry Nielsen. So, you know, John likes to jam just to form of release and that's what it was and they all sounded out of it of course <laughs> but it was fun and we didn't know Paul was going to come in so Paul and Linda lied and Paul became a drummer that night because he didn't want to play bass we didn't have a drummer he wanted to play drums what was Lennon playing guitar electric electric uh yes okay and you have a picture of Lennon playing of the drums too. Uh, yeah, that's here. just for hanging out. He that. could play the drums. He, he could they play well. All, all these guys can do all the instruments, believe it or not. Unbelievable. Yeah, I know. I can't do any of this. Uh, what, so what was McCartney and John like together that two days? How did they get along? Nothing much. Checking each other out, talking. Uh, you know, just hanging and just catching up. They hadn't seen each other for a few years. And you would, so you saw them again in New York, they got together? All the time. They would get together all the time? Oh, yeah. They, I mean, all of a sudden we would have them in our home. They'd be ringing our doorbell. And I would go, who's that? You know? But, yeah. So they stayed close all those years. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. that. They, they just used to show up. Um, did they talk a lot about music, or was it more personal lives when you saw them? A bit of both. 
not about, uh, it was about music, what are you doing? Our last time that we saw them together, it was in January of uh, 75, and you know, Paul's going, oh yeah, we're gonna go down to New Orleans to do an album, and John said, really, where are you going? And he goes, oh yeah, we're gonna go to this new album, which later became Venus and Mars. Right. Oh, that's a great album. Yeah, and so John and I, after they left, a couple of days later, John's going, well, I like the idea of New Orleans, you know, and I said, yeah, and he goes, i got to ask you something. I said, what's that? He goes, I think I should write with Paul again. And I turned around like the exorcist, you know, the head flips around, and I said, yeah, and he goes, why? And I said, well, you know, solo, your writing is good, but the two of you together, that's, that can't be me. Yeah, did John did John talk about that that he missed being with the guys or did he think it was time for him to be on his own? They didn't have any you know, it wasn't anything except the fact that I like to go down to New Orleans. I knew that if I could get him down there that would be they would they would be together. Yeah. You, know? you have a picture of him in Ellenville, which is about fifteen minutes from where I grew up. It's kinda interesting, right? John needed a break, and he says, because uh, we had been working constantly, we had just gone from uh, doing the Walls and Bridges album, working with uh, Elton, and we went out there, being in LA, doing a whole bunch of things, then we were coming back and we said, all right, now he says, before we do the rock, complete the rock and roll, because I need a break. And a friend of mine said, I have a place up in Ellenville, would you like to have it? And went up there. And these, my friends' dogs, and these, let me show you around. And that's where we were. We spent the weekend up there. Nice, beautiful place. Yeah. So it was good. It was and, good. You have, and you have a picture of that farm we were talking about, Morris Levy's farm. You have a yeah. picture there. <laughs> <laughs> Morris Levy's farm, yes. That, that was a whole controversy a little bit because of the rock and roll album he was, between him and uh, Lennon getting that album made. Yeah, that, that was a thing. I mean, John was always curious about Morris Levy anyway. You know, we heard stories about him. But it was good. I mean, you know, it was fun. Well, tell me about this song that you're famous for, uh, Dream Number no. 9. No, it's Number 9 Dream. Number 9 Dream, so. That's what it's got. You gotta get it right. It's number 9 Dream. It's a great song, one of the greatest, and uh, you're on it. You know, it was just one of those songs that was the last one he had a dream, and he genius of him, you know, he just wrote a song about it, right? And uh, he had an idea, he wanted someone to call out his name, that's in the, the lyrics, right? And he had me come in and do it. I had no idea I was coming in to do it. And he had the, the studio all set up for me. And he, did he talk about the lyrics with you when he was writing that song no, or nothing? he just went okay. in just to... All right, you have a great picture with him and Harry Nilsson. Uh, I know you got to know him pretty good. What, what was those sessions like? Those sessions. Oh my God. It, you're talking about Harry. You know, it was, it was not easy. And he was, it was amazing that he, we got through what we got through. So during the day, he would go and get acupuncture done with Harry. And at night, he'd blow out his voice, go out and hang out with other friends, and, and just, you know, do whatever. And uh, after a while, John says, I can't, I can't do this. And so let's just get out of here. He, he took Harry back to New York to complete the album. And they have a picture here at Mr. Adler's home, one of oh, these? Oh, yeah, uh, where, where, where it was taken. Hold on. This is in Mr. Adler's home. Okay. Lou Adler's home. That one. Thank you. I was taking that into Adler's You know, when I interviewed you the first time, you said you have to see the pictures to really understand it. These pictures are very emotional. They must be emotional for you to look at it. I've had a few years of practice <laughs> doing that. So, I know people come in here being very emotional, and they've never seen him like this. And I just sort of, for me, I've had a few years on it, so, and I could look at it and uh, see where we're going. You know, John gave a lot of interviews. We saw him on, on TV talking about him and the Beatles and everything else, but you were really close to him. Uh, what, what can you tell us about him personality-wise? What was John Lennon like behind, be, away from the camera? This is what these photographs are about, because when you see him, you're seeing the side of John that I saw. So it's not like, oh, he's posing, because these are just home photographs. And it just happened that they captured uh, a side that no one ever really saw. Yeah, we see him very content, very happy, 
he likes being with his kid. Uh, he he has pictures with his yeah, son. He a lot of with his friends, his kid. He had a good time. He just wanted to have fun. And this is his, this is something that not many people got a chance to see. And that's what I'm just glad that you know you had a chance to see him. And um, he hadn't been with his son for a while, right? This was a reunification no, yeah, that you yeah, saw. Yeah, it had been like, uh, he had come uh, in 74, he had come like three times in one year, whenever he got a break, and it was great. So, he had, prior to that, he hadn't seen his son in over three years. So it must have been a very emotional time that you were around between the oh, two Oh, absolutely, because I also managed to make sure that he got closure with his former wife as well, that they hadn't talked since the divorce so it was just it was it was a closure for them as well now, last question i have to ask you is the hardest one when you knew he was gone uh how did you handle that and what was that like I, it's knowing physically he's gone is tough but here's the thing he's not gone because i hear him on songs every day whether it be on the radio or somebody's somebody it's there so his spirit is around